going, people? I got some tips on my uh, air conditioner fix, and I went out and did a, changed a few things, so I wanted to pass on the tips because uh, some of them were pretty good. So if you notice this fan, this is the old engine, or, or the old motor. The shaft is only out about halfway, and there's still some room at the bottom. Now, I didn't check about the depth of this before I took it out. However, when I looked at this fan, this is the shroud on the air conditioner. And a couple guys said, you have to make sure and get it the right length. They didn't tell me the right length. So I did some research. And from what I found, the middle of this fan should be where this edge is at. So the grate fits on top up here. And you should have half of the fan above this shroud because this shroud comes down. And if your fan is too low, it sucks air back into the shroud and it rolls it back around. So it will not be as efficient cooling. Uh, so I looked at what was coming out of my vents and I was getting 60, 66 degree temperature out of my vents when the fan was right here. Because I put it halfway just like the other one. And then after I read and somebody mentioned that this, make sure your fan, your fins are at the right depth. And I did some research. I needed to move it up. Well, because this, and they said this is a common problem. When you replace the motor, some motors are taller. Since my other one was a one fifth horse, it was shorter when it's big. This is a one quarter horse. It's taller because it's taller. It moves the fan down lower. So this is as low as I could get the fan. It still operates. It doesn't hit anything. And this shroud, instead of being here in the middle, it's about here. So it's not as good as it should be, but it's as good as I can get it with this motor. And when I move this and turn it back on, it dropped my uh, temperature coming out from 66 to 62 out of the vents. So um, that's one tip. Uh, another tip is somebody asked if, because it was so rusty, did I treat this with uh, anti-seize? I treated it with uh, that dielectric grease. I just used Super Lube. So it is treated, and the blade is low. So make sure if you do this, because I didn't mention it, I don't, I don't like putting out bad information, make sure that your, your fin height should be halfway between the bottom of this shroud so it sucks all the air out versus rolling it back underneath, creating more heat. So the other tip I got, and this guy even said that it's kind of anal, but he said, I know that you want it to be neat. He goes, you cut your wire, you stripped them too long, and you have excess wire out here. So if a bug crawls across these, they get shocked, or a mice might chew on them, or they're just exposed. So he goes, Technically, if you want it done right, the, where you cut the plastic off should be right here. And all the wire should be underneath. I didn't trim these wires. This is how they came in the box. So I didn't mess with them. But you notice I either have excess here or I have excess on the other side. So what I did is I pulled them off and I cut them. And now it's moved in the way it's supposed to be. Another tip is... The capacitors, and in my other video, I, I, I remember I, I called a capacitor a compressor. My compressor is in the back, back here, and the capacitor is the little thing that holds the charge. But I did call it a compressor on the other one. So uh, the, the capacitor, every capacitor I've ever seen, and basically a capacitor is a little, I just call it like a little storage engine. It, it jump starts the, it's kind of like a, a battery, your cold cranking amps. If you get a battery with too low cold cream, it won't turn over your car. Your car will go rah, 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 rah before it starts. Well, if you get a, a higher battery with a higher cranking amp, it starts right up. So a, 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 a capacitor is basically just a bunch of extra juice to get your engine jump started really quick, and then it runs. And, and there's probably a thousand ways to explain them, but that's just the way I see them. So anyway, everyone I've seen, they're always sitting up and the connectors are on the top. And so I wondered if I could lay it down because I had to change the other capacitor and it wouldn't fit in the same hole. So I was going to lay it down horizontally instead of vertically, like this one. And what I read is it's okay to do that. When they used to have liquid in them, you couldn't do it. They had to be vertical. 
because there was a thing in the middle. If you laid them down, they might go over and cross circuit. Cut. But now, evidently, the new capacitors have little motherboards that store the infra that store the electricity. So it doesn't matter if it's vertical, horizontal, upside down. It works the same. The only problem with when you place your capacitor is you want good airflow because heat is not good for it. So if you cover it up or put a bunch of things around it and you trap all that heat, because electricity is constantly stored in there, they'll heat up and they won't cool. So that's the only thing you need to be concerned about. Uh, so this is my new wiring uh, after I uh, cut off the excessive wiring and I move the protective wiring straight up to the copper. So you notice there's no copper here. This is also where I changed my capacitor. The other tip that I was told is even though your old capacitor working, a bad capacitor can make your engine, my motor go bad. So maybe it was the capacitor that made the engine go bad. So if you get a new engine, you probably ought to put in a new capacitor. Well, I had a new capacitor, but I was going to wait till my old one broke. But the advice I got, which is pretty reasonable to me, put your new one in there so you know if the other one was bad, it's going to burn out this motor or it'll burn out your compressor now. So put your new one in so you know it works and keep the old one as a backup. And that made sense to me. So I hated to mess with it because it was working. and But you know what? I said, all right, what the hell? So I changed it. The problem is the new capacitor would not fit in this hole. It fell right through. So I ran some zip ties underneath it and all the way around and, and put it through the screw holes that was holding the other capacitor. And that's how I'm holding my capacitor vertical. So this is the new capacitor. It's just a straight 60. This is a straight 10. My old engine took a 3. This is a 10 for the new engine. The My old capacitor had 60 slash 3 because it ran the motor and this. Now my motor is on its own capacitor, which is a 10. And my compressor is on its own capacitor, which is a 60. So this is my new setup. And then after I did this, I kind of zip tied some wires. So these wires were kind of like hanging and going everywhere. Wasn't really bad, but I, I just, I put a little zip tie here to get them together. And this was kind of just hanging over here. And I put a little zip tie over here. So, uh, I didn't really do nothing with this. I, I don't know what the hell that is. They, they kind of been sitting there since I've had it. And I've never messed with that. So, um, I probably should have unscrewed that or drop a, a, a thing of solder down. If you drop a drop of solder down these things, it makes them so they don't back out. It kind of like solders it to the fitting, but you can't change it easy. So, you know, you got to be aware of that. But anyway, I, I didn't mess with those because, like I said, it's working. Now, this is my compressor. The capacitor that runs it is this tube right here. So I ran a zip tie underneath it to hold it like a cradle, and then I put another zip tie around it so this one would not slide off left or right. And uh, so... Uh, that's uh, the black and white or black and white wires, my two hots. That's coming from my power and a ground. So this is a ground. And uh, my compressor wires go straight up in a hole and goes over. All right. So those are the things that I changed. And uh, good tips. Thanks for all the input. And it's running fine. All right. Well, in that there.